Okay, here we are in part four, and obviously we are starting to split up a lot of these sections into multiple parts, uh, just because there's a lot of complexity, and in some ways I'm kind of just walking you through this as a typical map creation with all the normal bugs and issues that you'd run into. I didn't want to overly streamline everything, because you need to know how to work with a functional map, not just with an ideal situation. So we're going to be stumbling around a little occasionally, fixing the occasional bug, but overall, I think you'll get a lot of code that's very, very helpful in your future map building, and also just a functional understanding of what's really going on. So ultimately, with this integration, we're going to want not only user interactivity, which we've kind of gone over with our different mouse overs and events and all that stuff, but things to go on between interface and um, map, so to speak, between the outs outside interface and the map. So there's going to be back and forth interaction ultimately. Things you do in the sidebar is going to affect what's on the map and things you do in the map are affecting the sidebar. Uh, we want to have a type ahead. I'd really like to do that. So something that as we type will filter the map elements uh, based on what we type. Um, a select would be great too. Something where they can select certain magnitudes or things like that. As well as a range. That might even be better for magnitude is uh, be able to select a range of magnitude. So I'm anticipating getting to most of these. However, there's going to be a lot of other little features and things that come up along the way, and perhaps we won't get to range or select, but the things that you'll learn in these, if you know a little JavaScript already, are going to take you really far. Uh, so let's head out and start just doing some basic stuff first to clean this up. So I don't really like how the countries look, so why don't we make that look a little nicer. Maybe we could you know, make the border a little thinner and make it a different color, maybe also black or gray. Uh, maybe something that would suit this background a little better, maybe a greenish color. Um, so let's go here. We have this style. We have fill opacity zero. Um, we can probably keep that as zero. We can probably turn the uh, um, what, what is it? the weight. We can turn the weight to be just 0 0.3. Let's just see how that already lo looks when we do that. It's already a lot neater. Maybe you don't even need to really actually do a lot more. That's just a lot cleaner look, even just very simple. And maybe we'll do something now just on mouse over. So we can say here that um, on each feature, and then we'll say, uh, it's actually this function. It's going to get a feature and layer. And we'll have layer dot on, and we'll have mouse over. Maybe then we'll change the layers, uh, set style to be, uh, it's fill opacity to maybe be oh, 0.3 instead. And let's see what happens when we do that. Oh, there we go. We get a little bit of hover effect. Okay, that's kind of cool. Not that bad. I kind of like it. So well, let's make sure we also change it. Now you could refer to this a different way. You could say, um, refer to it using the event, but, you know, whatever whatever you prefer to do. Uh, there's always a little bit of creativity in different ways, and people will argue over the best way to do things. Uh, here, let's set it back to zero once we mouse out. All right, so now, um, as we mouse over, mouse out of things, we get actually even pretty cool on the left-hand side there, but there's a little break, so that's something we're not necessarily going to deal with right in this um, tutorial, but you can see that there's multiple map images, and we actually get a little bit of uh, screw-up in how they stop at the edge of the map. Uh, so, and we may we may tackle that at some point. I'm just not going to focus on it now. So here, this is pretty cool. You can mouse over, and that just, the map's looking a little bit, a little bit better. Maybe I'm going to reduce the opacity just a little more on these. Uh, the fill opacity can maybe be 0.1, and the opacity of the outer edge, sure, why not? That's a little bit more comprehensible. There sure is a lot of them happening right here. Many, many, many earthquakes. Okay, so let's uh, let's move this back up to the top corner first of all, because I like that much more. So we'll, uh, that's the overlay. So we have it here with the margin left. We're going to take that all out. Um, we don't need its width to be that way. And its bottom right, we don't need. So there we go, up at the top. Very nice. 
Okay, so we have this input that shows the center right now. Maybe we don't really need that to actually be an input. Uh, we can just turn it into something else. I'm going to get rid of this toggle since it's not actually doing anything. And this advanced toggle we're just going to put down there. So just let's do a little bit more cleaning up here. So instead of uh, it being input, maybe we'll just make this a div. We'll just give it the ID here. And now instead of uh, making it the value, well, here we go, I'm just finding it. I'm just going to make it the HTML. All right, that's, that's just fine. OK, and that way we can just now have it display. And we'll just get rid of our toggle. And to clean up, we can make sure that um, it's all not working if we had a click. There we go. Comment it out. OK, let's reload. And I kind of want to fit to bounds here. There's a little bit of a bounds issue where we're not getting the map to go just to where we want to. So we have some issues here with GeoJSON. It's not matching the country, so and it's because we're not referring to the right thing anymore. And I actually want it to fit to all the countries and not the earthquakes necessarily. So let's just have it do that again. There we go. Um, and there we are. So that's fairly nice. Our advanced toggle. OK, so let's add another input here in our um, underneath the center. We'll add an input, and we'll have a little bit of detail saying, you know, like um, search filter. OK. Input ID equals search. And that's about all we need on that. Now and type people's text. Okay. And now what we're going to do is just write a little bit of stuff. We're going to do it after we've defined uh, these earthquake things. So we're going to make functions document dot on key up, and then we have to give the element just search. And here we are. So what we're going to do when we search, we're going to filter the earthquake GeoJSON. We're basically going to just hide and show the different elements depending on um, what is being typed. So we're going to say each layer, which is a really handy function that you're going to use whenever you have one of these feature groups or layer groups or GeoJSON, any of the layers we've talked about in Leaflet, you can actually go right over them. And in this key up from search, we're going to get the user input is going to be the value of the input, which if you've done some JavaScript, you should be familiar with this. So now what we're going to have to do is actually be able to see something about the layer to try to find out what property we're going to filter by. So let's see here. If we just type something in here. We get a whole bunch of them, which makes sense. So they all have a radius and everything. Now if we look at their different, it has a feature thing in here that has the properties. So there's all these properties. Now I think I'd like to filter by probably place or maybe title. Title makes sense. So we'll use the title property and it's inside the features.properties. So if we go E, okay, so we have to, it's the layer here. So we have to say if the layer dot, let's check it, feature dot properties dot title index of, and then we check basically if that user input is present in it. We check if it's more, basically this is checking for, if you know JavaScript you know this, but just checking for the index of this particular set of characters in this uh, variable, or in the, you know, the string of this variable, and if it has it then it will be greater than negative one. So if it does, then we're going to say layer. Uh, let's see if we can go to leaflet and just check the layer uh, thing. So layer group. And if we go over events from layer, we got add and remove there. That's an event. But we want method. There's add layer and remove layer. So OK, we have to make sure we do that. So layer dot add to map or map dot remove layer layer okay let's see how that will work e, uh, ok 
Okay, we got something going here. So it's a little bit weird, this syntax, how it's not exactly intuitive that they're actually reversed. And you can probably use a different syntax. I'm, I'm, you might be able to add, do add layer. Let's see if that also works. It does seem to work. Yeah. Okay. What if we search? Oh, but we don't get them coming back. So maybe oh, layer dot add layer is actually not a function. Okay, so we have add to map and remove map dot remove layer layer. Just a thing you got to remember. So we could type in California here, and it doesn't quite show, but maybe CA will show. Okay, what if we typed in CA? Okay, we don't get anything when it's lowercase. Common problem in filters. Best thing to do here is to make sure they're sent to lowercase when you um, are going to be checking your index of. It's always makes it much more likely. You know, no one really exert, is, expects a cased search. So there you go. CA now shows up properly. Okay, so that's great. Now we have that uh, live type ahead search going. So this is one of those ones I wanted to get going. Maybe if we type Alaska, do these shirts show? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we can basically filter this way. Um, we can maybe even do magnitudes, you know, 3.2. Okay, so that's probably 3.2. Or maybe if we just type 3. But we don't know for sure if that's actually magnitude or maybe it's part of the address. Uh, might be nice to have a pop-up showing a little bit here. So let's get a couple more um, mousy related interface effects going. And uh, then we will continue on with uh, more and more of these filters. So let's make it so that when we click one of these, uh, we get some information about it. It's a little annoying that the background flashes when we're doing this. Uh, we can do something to make that work, but for now, let's just uh, let's just add our, our clicks. So here, with its point to layer, when it's um, returning the circle, we're probably going to make it want to bind a pop-up to that. So if we say bind pop-up, OK. And then we can just put a whole bunch of information from this. Maybe we even want to automate it. So we could say our uh, HTML is this. And we'll go geojson.point. Maybe we'll say for var prop in geojson.point. And all we're going to do is just every time there's a property, we're going to add a little bit of HTML. So we're going to say HTML plus equals. We're going to give it the prop. Then um, then that colon. And then the value. And then just a break tag so that it all goes to the next line. And uh, that will actually give us, maybe we can also put some uh, bold tags around this. Makes it a little bit nicer. Um, we actually could just do that then. OK, so there we go. And uh, let's see, we can put that HTML in the bind pop-up. Let's see what that does. Let's see if that works. So we get a bunch of oh, features. Yeah, oh, we maybe went over the wrong thing. We want to go over here. Dot properties. OK. And we'll just make this go to string so that no matter what we get, we get it as a string. All right. Oh, things didn't add properly. So maybe we just we leave that. All right. So let's see. Oh, we got a whole bunch of things that say they're undefined. So what do we do wrong here? Uh, we need to copy this a little bit more. My bad. Very simple mistake. See the pop-up's really huge. Well, there's certainly a lot of data in there, so we can see plenty. So maybe we don't actually want all of that. Maybe we will just get the mag, the place, the time. Yeah, the mag, the place, the time, and uh, the title. Mag, place, time, and title. So we could say here, um, we could even do a thing like var array of, na of uh, props equals title, mag, place, time. That's cool. And then we can just actually iterate right over this. So this is just, again, just a couple ways you can kind of handle adding you know, just basic loops, things you've done before if you know your JavaScript. 
So here we can actually just um, go for GeoJSON point dot properties dot prop the same way. See how that loads in. Yeah, that's a little bit more manageable. Okay, so we have a repeatable thing here. We could also have an image if it had an image tag associated with it. So, so that's nice. All right, so we're getting somewhere. So in the next little section, we're going to uh, hook up a little bit more filters here. And mainly, we're going to uh, bring in a range. I'm going to actually do the range slider right away to do some of the magnitude. <laughs>